message for all people. And that this ministry is very aware that people come to Christ with just a variation of uh, lifestyles and backgrounds. And so our motto is whosoever will, let them come. Uh, we're a multicultural ministry. We're non-denominational. We know that there's a lot of people uh, in the community that were unchurched. And so we wanted to present a ministry that would specifically include people who are not familiar with church and would maybe have some uh, fears and concerns about going to church. We are very sensitive that everybody's not the same. So we're very committed to reaching out to you and, and letting you feel the love of Christ. New Life uh, offers uh, outreach to the community through a bullying program for our young people that we really want them to know that we are against bullying in school. And so we had a program that went into the schools uh, last year and taught about uh, bullying and how not to be a bully. And then we also offer uh, prison ministry, nursing home ministry, and um, uh, the Pregnancy Crisis Center in our community. So these are some of the things that we're involved with. Our music department is more contemporary. It's the type of songs that you would hear on, you know, Christian radio and uh, more upbeat. Our band is made up of a lot of teenagers, probably five or six of them. We have primarily young people, but we have some older gentlemen too that are part of the band. And they have a heart and a desire to play music, uh, you know, for God. And so we're very fortunate to be able to help shape and mold these young people in church and offering their gifts and talents uh, to further the kingdom of God. Our ministry is very unique. Uh, we have zero fundraisers. And even if you attend our services, we don't pass the pan. Uh, we just trust God. We have a free will and a tithe offering container that's located in the rear of our church. And then you at your own discretion, uh, you know, have that opportunity to give, but uh, no one will ever come to you and solicit for funds for the building or for the pastor or for missions. But we do all of those things and we trust God. And every month God supplies us uh, with the necessary uh, funds to support uh, what we're doing in ministry. And as we grow, then we're going to be able to do more and more. But nobody has to feel pressure about finances to be a part of this ministry. But we make you feel welcome. And I'm just the kind of pastor that really wants you to grow. I'm not going to minister to you uh, that it's okay to stay where you come in at, but I'm going to present it in such a way that you can relate to it and it will help you to really understand that Christ died so that you can be made free from whatever hangups, whatever vices, whatever hurts, whatever disappointments, and that our focus is Jesus. It's not the pastor, it's not the first lady, it's not the congregation, it's Jesus. We're always talking about Christ and his love for all people. If you wanted to learn more about New Life Church of Faith, uh, you can attend our Sunday services at 1419 Bowman Avenue in Danville, Illinois. We're located at the Heavenly Square Mall, and uh, that's 11 o'clock a.m. service. Champaign-Urbana, you can uh, be a part of our 8 o'clock service, and we're located at the Hanford Hotel. That's 2408 Cunningham Avenue. We praise your name. We sing hallelujah for what you do, Lord. We worship you. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And everyone said amen. 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 Come on, somebody shout glory. Come on, shout glory. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Come on and shout thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Because of who you are, hallelujah. I give you praise, hallelujah. You may be seated, hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. I, uh, I've been all week 
looking forward to preaching this one. Ooh. I preached it at 8 o'clock, but I preached it at 11 like I ain't preached it. Oh, my God. I mean, this is better than M&M's right here. This is mm, mm, good. Is that Campbell's soup? Yeah, Campbell's soup. Mm, mm, good. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Better put your seatbelt on. We're going somewhere today. We are going somewhere today. All praise, credit, glory, and honor to God today. Thank him today for being here. Thank God for my lovely companion. Don't you look pretty? Lord have mercy. Because I got Jesus and Sister Miller, I'm going to be all right. God is so good to me. Thank God today for all of the elders, ministers, and for our visitors today. God bless you today. you welcome here to New Life Church of Faith. Everybody, everybody. Whew. I want to talk to you today about you are a seed. That's S-E-E-D. Seed. You are a seed. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody say, I am a seed. Hmm. The part that is missing, if you can grab the first part that you are a seed, then say the second part, underdeveloped. <laughs> underdeveloped seed. You're a seed. Now, the Bible says seeds reproduce after their own kind. <laughs> Don't you want to know what kind of seed you are so you can start reproducing? See, because if you don't know what kind of seed you are, then you might set your real expectations too low. You may limit yourself in really understanding who you are. But you must first get it in your mind that you are a seed. Now seeds are given so that they can produce something that is fruitful. Seeds are given so that they can multiply. You are, and I am, an undeveloped seed. I got to get my big word, Deacon Lyle. Metamorphosis. We got some probably third graders in here that in third grade, I think it's about third grade, they start teaching them about the caterpillar. And the caterpillar has to go through metamorphosis to become hallelujah. What is it about Danny Odom that's undeveloped. What is it about Robert Lucas, teacher Lucas? What about the rest of y'all, first lady? See, because if you believe you are already fully developed, then you won't develop no more. But when we get through with the Holy Ghost in this message today, you're going to really see how far from where God wants you to be. Because he's going to show it to you clearly what kind of seed you are. And when you get the revelation of what kind of seed you are, 
you ain't going to never be the same. I don't even know today who I'm looking at. I don't even know, Tasha, who you really are. Don't even know who Minister Daniel is. Don't even know because we got to get this understanding of who we are in order to become who we are. You can't become who you are till you know who you are. Wouldn't that make sense? I really can't metamorphose. <laughs> metamorphosize, Sister Miller said. I really can't, I can't really get out of this cocoon and spread my wings till I know what kind of seed I am. I'm getting ready to show you who you are. In the word of God, it's going to blow your mind when you see this. So you will never, ever be the same. Genesis 1 and 26. Genesis 1 and 26. You are a seed. You got to find out what kind of seed? Because every seed reproduces after its own kind. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. Let me show you in the Bible what kind of seed you are. Genesis 1 and 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over the cattle. And over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him male. And female created he them. When you think about God, whenever you think about God, when you think about God, what do you think about God, Minister Dion? Great. Minister Cunningham, what do you think about when you think about God? Awesome. Sister Tamara, when you think about God, what do you think about him? Powerful. Minister Carter, what do you think about him when you think about God? Unlimited. Young lady, I can't call your name. Tammy Dodd, I'm glad to see you. When you think about God, what do you think about God? Thankful. When you think about him, Sister Thelma, what? Open door. Sister Delphina, when you think about God, what do you think about him? Awesome. My sister, what do you think about? Love. When you think about him, sister, wonderful. When you think about him, he didn't have to do it. When you think about God, when, when you really begin to feel good about God, what comes in your mind, teacher? All knowing. Damn. Come on, brother Lucas. Greater benefits. I heard somebody way in the back say, all knowing. Joy. Check this out. And God said, let us make man like us. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Every seed reproduces after its kind. So God said, I made you great. And I made you wonderful. And I made you powerful. And I made you forgiving. And I made you kindness. And I made you whatever y'all said. That's who you are. 
Come on now. 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 He said, you and I are a seed. Every seed reflects. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. See, y'all ain't getting this. Uh Uh-uh, no, some of y'all ain't getting this, see, because if you really get the revelation of who you really are, since God said, I made you like me, I made you a little G. And whenever you think about yourself from this day forward, when you think about God, think about yourself. And when you say God is great, I am great, and God is powerful, and I am powerful, and God is wonderful. Because God said, I am his seed. I am the seed. You are the seed of God. And God said, when I created them, I made them like me. I made every one of us. See, see, the only reason why you, the only reason why you, my God. The only reason why you, you the only reason why, because you don't, you don't believe who you are. See, if you ever get the revelation who you really are, what kind of seed you really are. When we see little Dirk, we say, that's big Dirk's son. Huh? We see Aaliyah, we say, that's Dion's daughter. Why? Because they look like him. You ever talk to folks that don't know you personally, but when they see the Wade in you, they say, you a Wade. You the way it ain't you, girl. When they see you, brother Luke, and they say, oh, come on. Oh, uh, uh, man, uh, Duke, 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 your daddy, ain't it? You ever, ever see people that say, girl, she smiled just like her mama. The way she turned her head, that's just how her mama turned her head. Do you see the way he walked? He walked just like his daddy. When you see him coming, you say, boy, here come his son. Because why? He is the seed. Y'all better grab this right here. I want y'all to grab this right here because, see, this is the undeveloped part. I want you to grab this. God ain't through with you. But I got to show you what he did when you didn't even know you. I want to show you what he did when you didn't even know you. You were a seed that was planted in your mama's womb. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I don't know. Some of these doctors and medical people may be able to tell us mathematically how small a seed we were when we were planted in our mother's womb. But in that little seed, was your big old head? Was them eyeballs? Was them legs and them arms and that heart and the muscles and every organ that was in your body? It was already in that little seed, but you couldn't see it. It was undeveloped, but when it got planted in the right soil, when it got planted in the good ground, My God, germination began to happen. And the next thing they said, after two or three months, uh, we hear a heartbeat. Somebody said the heart was already in the seed. The heart was already in the seed, but it was undeveloped. Do you understand what God is saying to you today? That even though you sit here today as a physical body, that's not who you are. You are a spiritual being that lives in this body, and you are. (sighs) See, Holy Ghost told me to tell you the real you is not a body but the real you lives in the body because the real you was not created a body 
you were created a spirit. I said you was created a spirit. You and I are spirits that live in a body. That's not, that's not, oh my God. Let's not water it down. Let's not make ourselves less than who we are because we have believed some lies from the enemy's camp. Undeveloped seed. Somebody say, what's inside of you? Was, uh, where's she at? Minister Tapper somewhere, but we was coming down the highway yesterday and we was listening to Cindy Trim. And I said, they're all up in my message. And Cindy Trimble, because they went down there, the woman died loose. And Cindy Trimble told them, Adam didn't even know Eve was inside of him. Adam didn't know that a woman was inside of him. And God went in and, there she is. Skyscrapers. They was inside somebody. Apple computer was inside somebody. There was a heart surgeon inside of a man that when that seed developed, that man, because of who he is, a creator, went inside of another man, pulled his heart out, worked on the heart, Who am I looking at that's undeveloped in this room right now? What creation is are we missing right now because you don't know who you are? You don't even know that you have the pattern for some creation that you can be a billionaire, but you don't even realize that because of who you are, you shouldn't think that you cannot become what God is. And you and I are undeveloped seed. <laughs> 1970s, old Scotty and Kirk. We was all so wishing that that little play-like instrument that they had in their hand when he said, Scotty, beat me up. We all wished we had one, didn't we? Now all of us running around with a wireless instrument in our hand telling one another, beam me up. I'm over in Chicago. How you doing over in Africa? Come on here. (sighs) It was inside. It's inside. What's inside of you right now, young people, that we haven't discovered yet? Because until you understand, you were created in his likeness. Somebody say, whatever my daddy can do. Y'all better grab it. Whatever my creator is a part of me. Because he told me right in Genesis, y'all didn't get it. He said, I made you a powerful being in the earth just like me. I gave you dominion and authority and power over the fish, over the fowl, over the beast, over the creeping thing, over everything that moves on the earth. And why in the world would you have that? Kind of authority unless you are seed. How can you do that? What kind of seed are you? Now, this is what most of us are messing up in the church. Jesus told us when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. See, we don't believe Jesus was just like we are. See, we think Jesus was, oh, he was, he was the son of God, so Jesus did stuff. And so why would Jesus, why would Jesus get up out of the bottom of a ship and rebuke wind and rain and then turn to his disciples and say, oh, ye of little faith, he was telling them, don't you know who you are? What did the disciples do? They walked away and said, what kind of man is this? 
Man, what kind of man would rebuke the wind and the rain? And Jesus said, Hello! Well, I'll be with you. <sighs> you undeveloped, Deacon Lyle. I ain't putting you down. I'm just telling you a fact. The greatness of who you are, we ain't seen yet. We settling, Deacon. We settling every day like we regular. We settling every day because we get a little house or a little car that, oh, that's pretty good. You ain't never thought about God little. Whenever you think about God, you say, how great thou art. How brilliant thou art. How intelligent thou art. How powerful thou art. How beautiful thou art. How wonderful thou art. And then you look at yourself and you start dumbing down. You'll see. And we read in 1 and 26, you're a seed of God. you little G. But you'll never think about God without thinking about why we come this morning. Because we believe he's great. Huh? Some of y'all tired. Some of y'all didn't went to work and everything come against you this week. But somehow you made yourself come to church again. Why? Because you said, if I can just get close to God. If I can just hear God talk to me. If God can just touch my body. If God can just touch my family. If God can just move in my finances. If God can bring little Sally home. If God can just touch Junior. Part of God do you think is limited? You don't never think about God in limitation. You always think about God doing impossible things. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You and I. I had my glasses. I didn't got drunk. Here they are. Yeah. Uh-huh. You are a seed. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. Last two to three days, muscles in the joint of this hand just start locking up. Severe arthritic pain start hitting this. Mm. And the Holy Ghost said, servant, heal thyself. Wait a minute. How can I heal myself? He said, because the real you is a spirit being over this body. The spirit man that lives in the body is over the body. Okay. What we always do. God heal me. Don't we do it? God heal me. God needs you to heal me, God. So since I'm a little G, then the God man speaks to the house man and tell the house man, be healed. Because if I believe that I'm a spirit man, and not just any spirit man, y'all help me, I'm going to put it over in the right pocket this time. See? We keep believing that somehow God is far away from us. And we could just get God to come by your house. Everything would be all right. And God says, you my seed. I made you like me. Somebody say, and the spirit man talks to the house man. And tells the house man, be healed. Now, would God be able to tell the body to be healed? I said, would God be able to tell the body to be healed? Do we believe in God's ability to heal? 
Then God said, I created you like me. And I'm telling you, you are a healer. You are a healer. Do we believe God can create? Do we believe God can create? So God is saying, I made you like me. Come on, somebody say, and the God man. Whatever this body needs, I tell the God man, create it. I tell the God man on the inside, I need new kidneys. And I command in this body, new kidneys. If God can say it, he said, I can say it. And I command new kidneys. The God man speaks to the house that I live in and repairs itself. <laughs> you believe God can give you a new heart? And God said, I made you like me. Now speak to your heart and tell it, be thy created new. How many believe God regulates blood pressure? And so you know if God say regulate blood pressure, come up or come down, level off, how many know it'll do it if you believe God can do it? And God said, I created you in my image and in my likeness and whatever I do, Check it out. We are God manifesting. We're little G's. Everything in the earth was raw, but we, the gods that he created of himself in these bodies, are the ones that build the skyscrapers. We build everything from the raw material because of the seed that we are. How many know you don't ever think about is what God do is something crazy? But when we do stuff, we are like, well, I can't believe. Why would you not believe a doctor's son of a doctor would be a doctor? <laughs> you don't even trip on that. The doctor, the dad is a doctor? Well, he's a doctor. And mama, her mama's a nurse? She's a nurse. Let me fix it up. The mama's a doctor? Her daughter's a doctor. Come on here, women. Hallelujah. Her mama's a professor. So little G's a professor too. You mean her daughter's a professor too? Where, where, where? Huh? Come on. See, we, we, don't, we, we, we don't get tripping until it comes to us. Who are you? Undeveloped seed. All these children in this room, all of them are undeveloped seed. And all of us parents that are good parents, we trying to get our little seed in good ground. Huh? Oh, Oprah had me crying last week. Oprah took 72 little girls from South Africa out of the ghetto of South Africa. It's called Shantytown. It was a place of such poverty that it 150% precedes what we call poverty in America. But Oprah took them little seeds out of that poverty and she whew, planted them into a campus of nothing but the baddest, smartest, the most brilliant people in the world. And they begin to cultivate that seed. And how many know all 72 of them little girls out of shanty town graduated from high school on their way to college? Why? Because the seed was already there, but it needed to be cultivated. It needed to be taken out of poverty and put in a place where they could blossom. Somebody said it was already there. Come on, talk to these young folks. Say, you don't even know. You don't even know what kind of seed you are. <sighs> Kurt Franklin, I listened a little bit to his documentary the other day. And Kurt Franklin's mother told Kurt Franklin at a young age, I wanted to abort you but your grandmother made me have you and how many know if she had aborted Kurt we wouldn't have had stuff revolutionized the church in the last 20 years Kurt Franklin was an undeveloped seed but there was some people that took Kurt and they nurtured Kurt and they built Kurt up so Kurt started believing who he was and out of Kurt 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 we ain't heard whoa we ain't heard all the Kurt Franklin we go here because that is a 
see. (sighs) 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 Who in this room undeveloped? Everybody. So you don't have to feel bad. Everybody. This is what he say about us. He created us like him. Check this out. You can never die. You can never die. He said, let us make them like us. (sighs) And he became a living soul. Somebody said B-E-I-N-G. Being. That means for infinity. Forever. You change. But you don't never die. Because you're a spirit being. Uh-huh. You, 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 you forever. Quit letting the devil torment you about this old body that you in. You got enough power to make your body do what you say. You are created in his likeness. And so you never die. And God made you like him. You ever read in there where he said, and the spirit renews itself daily. Daily. Every day is new. Every day, new mercies. Every day, new power. Every day, new wisdom. Every day. When you think about God, is God smart? I said, is God smart? When you think about God, you say, omniscience. Somebody said, look at omniscience. I'm looking at omniscience right now. He's alpha and omega. Come on now. Come on, y'all. Okay. This is the sad part of the message. How much seed never develops? How many millions of God's creation never develop? They they destroy themselves. They let the world convince them that they have no other choice but to do things that destroy themselves. Everybody in this room knows some folks that you see their potential. Huh? You looking at them like, you smart. You can do that. And they look back at you like. So they're 50 and they're 60 and they're 70 and they're still getting high. Undeveloped seed. Doing elementary things at 70 years old, still getting drunk. Still around with a mini skirt on at 70 with all them Caravos veins and just what's big pimping 70 years old with his earring in hey pocket full of Viagra just How many of our young men are killing themselves on the streets of America because they don't know that they're the seed of God? How many of our young women trashing their lives out? And oh my God, why would you put up with a no good man unless you don't know you're the seed of God? You are royalty. You're brilliant. Because you think about God's God brilliant. Come on, somebody say, I am brilliant. Uh, you think about God. Is God great? Come on, say, I am great. Uh-huh. Come on, you think about God. Is God smart? Come on, somebody say, I'm smart. Come on. What did the woman tell the little, little girl on Help movie? You is smart. You is kind. 
you was important. Come on. Come on. How many of you know we need to tell ourselves that every day? I is kind. I is smart. I is important. Come on! What kind of seed are you? Are you coming from good seed? Yes, you are. You were created in his image. And... Okay. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Look at this right now. I'm going to show you what happens. Over here, y'all supposed to help me. Right pocket. Luke 8 and 11. St. Luke 8 and 11. And I only gave them 8 and 11 to put on the screen, but we're going to read more. St. Luke 8 and 11. Thank you, Jesus. I want to show you here in the Bible. Come on, somebody begin right now. Begin to meditate, begin to meditate on who you are. Because if you believe that God is great, he said, you are my seed. I started out in Genesis showing, God started out in Genesis showing us our beginning. Is that right? Genesis, the book of beginnings, he's showing us this is who we really are. I don't care what you become, that's not who you are if you're not reflecting God. If you're not reflecting greatness, if you're not creating, if you're not expressing brilliancy, if you're not involved with omnipotence of power, then you are not developing who you are. You can't become something that you're not, but it's a dirty shame when you don't become what you could be. Excuse my French. It's sad. To be wasted away in this world when you could have been, oh my God, driving a Bentley. Y'all quiet. Now see, look at some of y'all. You're, you're dropping in your faith right now. You, you Right now, you're dropping in your faith because, see, I told my little niece this morning who just graduated uh, Elder Miller's daughter from uh, uh, beauty school on Friday. And I said, Wanda and her sister's a licensed beautician. And I said, y'all need to have uh, uh, Wanda and Julie beauty uh, uh, shop. I said, oh, M&M, Miller and Miller. And then while I was preaching to her in Champagne this morning, the Holy Ghost said, that ain't the end of it. He said, why don't they have their own beauty school? And they are licensed to teach other folks how to get their license. And reach into the ghetto, come on here, and pull out some more seed. And begin to cultivate it. And begin to build it up. And begin to tell them, you are the seed of God. We are settling for so much less than what we can have. You don't want to work for nobody. You want to be your own boss. Look, 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 look at people drawing back in this room. Look at them. Just, uh, well, I just can't do that. The Bible won't let me. I just got me some corn and some beans. Shoot, I got more than my bad, my mammy and my pappy had. They never had a washer and dryer. Shoot. Y'all's getting too big for y'all's britches. You better be careful. You better stay in your place. Why you think we over here at the Heavenly Square Mall owning it instead of renting it? Come on here. Why do you think we keep moving this ministry to another level? Because I don't make no boasts in myself, but God in me won't let me stay little. The God in me won't let me stay down. He keeps pushing me and pushing me. He keeps telling me, boy, what's wrong with you? Soloing. Sit there and don't develop who you are. It ain't God's fault. 
Somebody said you always got to have a seed before you can have a harvest. What good is it to have seed that you don't plant? It ain't nobody's fault that you don't have a harvest. You don't have no excuse after this message. Luke 8, we got to get you out of here. Look at St. Luke 8 and 11. Now the parable is this, what? The seed is the word of God. Shout glory. Hmm. Okay, somebody said metamorphosis. When I read God's word, it's a seed. Listen to me. A seed contains the thing you after. So if you have God's word, then you have the seed. If you have the word that says, with God's stripes, you were healed. Right? That's The word is the seed, right? So you got to plant the seed in your heart. I said you got to plant the seed in your heart. I said you got to plant the seed in your heart. You got to plant the seed in good ground. You cannot not plant it. You can keep it in your hand, but it won't never grow. It's got to get out of your Bible and get in your heart. When you get that seed in good ground, last March or April, the farmers had a lot of corn seed. Did they not? And they they spread it all over them fields. And then this last September and now into October, we see whole ears of corn. And all those ears of corn were in those seeds. And when they put the seed in the ground, God do what he do. And the seed turned into eatable corn. Come on now. Somebody said, take this word today. Whatever, whatever word you plant in your heart is going to grow. Now, y'all, I got to keep taking y'all back. Somebody say, I'm created like God. So that means if I plant seed like God, if I believe God can grow corn, hello? If I believe God can grow corn, if I believe God can grow corn, if I believe God can heal bodies, if I believe God can make a way out of no way, if I believe God can open doors, if I believe God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, if I believe God, and I'm the seed of God. <sighs> okay, I like seed knowledge. Look at this. Somebody said mustard seed. Move a mountain. Anybody believe God can move mountains? I said, does anybody in this room believe God can move mountains? If you would think about God, you say, God, I know you a mountain move. Ooh, mountain moving God. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I know you can move it, God. And God said, who are you, little G? What did he tell us? What did he tell us? He said, if you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move. Now, how can you, Deke? How can you, a Deacon a Gersette? How can you, Sister Carla? How can you, Sister Demetra? How can you move a mountain unless the seed of mountain moving power has been given to you? The only reason why you won't tell your mountain to move is because you don't believe you got the power to move it. You don't believe you can move mountains because you don't believe what seed you are. God ain't never told you to do something you couldn't do. Come on. You don't believe you can move it. That's why you don't speak to it. Real quick. 12 says these by the wayside or they that hear and then cometh the devil and taketh away the word, take away the seed. I'm telling you, before you get out of this room today, the devil is going to try to steal this message from you. 
Before you leave today, you will get around some people that will try to convince you of somehow watering down this message. Yeah, 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 I know what he said, but. These by the wayside are those that hear and then come with the devil and take away the word out of where? Out of their hearts. Somebody say your heart is the, is, is the ground to make this word come alive. Somebody say if you believe it in your heart. Ah, come on, catch it. Ten and nine of Romans if you confess with your mouth and what? Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead that shall be saved. Least they should believe and be saved. 13. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. See, you, this word is real to you. But here come the devil with some stuff that you like. He's coming with some appetites. He's coming with some dainties of stuff that you like. And when he says, I'll give you your weed or your man or your drug or your quick money or some other slick deal, he'll pull you away from the word because, see, everything that you want is in the word, but the devil will make you leave the word and take a generic gift from him that will totally and completely deceive you. Hmm. So how does he steal the word? Remember this. You're doing good in church this morning. You're going to have to do good this afternoon after church. I said you're going to have to do good Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. But he's going to bring temptation to some folks. And he's going to get some folks with temptation. 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard uh, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Somebody said you can start out real good. And you are about to bring forth some fruit, but it ain't ripe yet. And before it gets ripe, the devil gets you caught up in the cares of this world. I got to make that money. I got to get over here and, and get involved with a good time. I got to find myself a way to get rich. And all along, God has said, I told you in 6 and 33, if you would seek ye first the kingdom of God, I, oh my God, I'd give you everything you want. But the enemy's after that word because that word is the seed. He got to get the seed out of the heart. He got to get you back to doubt and unbelief. He got to get you. How many know that you can get real busy and, and mess up your prayer life? Can I get a witness in this room right now? Can I get a witness in this room that when the Lord start blessing you, somehow you ain't got time to pray like when you didn't have three cars and you didn't have three color TVs and you didn't have five computers and you didn't have no CDs in the bank. But when God began to bless us, Pastor Miller, the pastor, he's supposed to go to 6 a.m. prayer. The deacons are supposed to come to prayer meetings and Bible studies, but whew, and he's stealing the word away from you. I've seen people lose their minds when God permits stuff to be taken from them. And you know why they lose their minds? Because they shifted their love from God to stuff. He can never take you from God. But he can take stuff from you from God. Ask Brother Job. Hmm. So how does he kill some of us and take some of us out of the church? Y'all heard me say it before. If the Lord give you a million this week, would you worship this Sunday coming? If the Lord give you the job you want, would you worship next Sunday? Oh, I'm getting ready to mess up some single folks. If he give you Beyonce and, and Denzel next week, your bed ain't cold no more. You got a hallelujah at your side. I wonder, can I go to 6 a.m. prayer? No, I ain't going to be able to do it. I wonder if he get you a PhD on your wall and you become Dr. Somebody. You know, lots of very highly educated people, they don't worship no more. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
And if you ain't careful, they'll try to convince you that their intelligence is at the level that they don't need to worship anymore. And some of them begin to degress to uh, 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 agnostics and atheists. And never have we ever said in this message that you become bigger than the God that created you. I kept telling you little G's. Never told you you can operate. He said in 15 chapter St. John, outside of me, you can do nothing. I am divine. You are the branches. Your life support comes from God. So some, because you get too big for your britches, you don't need to worship no more. Some are convinced that the Holy Ghost is really not needed when he is the engine of the church. Not the Holy Ghost can't nothing happen because he is the power of the invisible. <laughs> He's the one that makes the blood move through your veins. He's the one that when you were that seed in your mother's womb that made you grow eyes and ears. He was the one that brought you out of the womb and now lets you walk around. Come on, rest on your feet. Number 15 says, But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. I want to say to you this morning, you can't have a harvest before it's time. You cannot have a harvest until time. But somebody say, while I'm waiting, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Somebody says, coming. Somebody says, coming in. Come on, somebody. Who's planted the word in your hearts? Who in this room have planted the word of God in your hearts about your body? Then you get ready for your healing because you're the seed of God. You are the seed of God. And healing was put inside. Get ready for your job, your car, your, your finances. Get ready for your business. Get ready for a righteous husband and a righteous wife. Get ready for it. Get ready for successful children. Get ready for everything and anything. Because whenever you think about God, you don't never think about failure. You never associate God with failure. You never say too hard for God. God can't do it. You don't never have association with God like that. God said, you my seed, and I created you in my image and in my likeness. Come on, Sister Miller. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God for you tuning in to New Life Church of Faith. We're located here in Danville at the Heavenly Square Mall, 1419 Bowman Avenue. We're non-denominational. We have no denominational preference. We believe Jesus Christ and him crucified. We invite you to our Champagne location. That's 201 Lincoln Square. That's 8 o'clock Sunday morning. God gets up early. And they say in the streets that the early bird gets the worm. And you can get up early on Sunday morning and get your miracle. You can get your blessing, get your praise on, get your shout on. 201 Lincoln Square, 8 o'clock, Champaign Abandoned, the Lincoln Square Mall. We're located inside the Lincoln Square Mall on the west end of the mall. We invite you again to our Danville location, 1419 Bowman Avenue, 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. God bless you. Hallelujah. For all people, and that this ministry is very aware that people come to Christ with just a variation of... Uh, lifestyles and backgrounds and so our motto is whosoever will let them come uh, we're a multicultural ministry we're non-denominational we know that there's a lot of people uh, in the community that were unchurched and so we wanted to present a ministry that would specifically include people who are not familiar with church 
and would maybe have some uh, fears and concerns about going to church. We are very sensitive that everybody's not the same. So we're very committed to reaching out to you and, and letting you feel the love of Christ. New Life uh, offers uh, outreach to the community through a bullying program for our young people that we really want them to know that we are against bullying in school. And so we had a program that went into the schools uh, last year and taught about uh, bullying and how not to be a bully. And then we also offer uh, prison ministry, nursing home ministry, and uh, uh, the Pregnancy Crisis Center in our community. So these are some of the things that we're involved with. Our music department is more contemporary. It's the type of songs that you would hear on, you know, Christian radio and uh, more upbeat. Our band is made up of a lot of teenagers, probably five or six of them. We have primarily young people, but we have some older gentlemen, too, that are part of the band. And they have a heart and a desire to play music, uh, you know, for God. And so we're very fortunate to be able to help shape and mold these young people in church and offering their gifts and talents uh, to further the kingdom of God. Our ministry is very unique. Uh, we have zero fundraisers. And even if you attend our services, we don't pass the pan. Uh, we just trust God. We have a free will and a tithe offering container that's located in the rear of our church. And then you at your own discretion, uh, you know, have that opportunity to give, but uh, no one will ever come to you and solicit for funds for the building or for the pastor or for missions. But we do all of those things and we trust God. And every month God supplies us uh, with the necessary uh, funds to support uh, what we're doing in ministry. And as we grow, then we're going to be able to do more and more. But nobody has to feel pressure about finances to be a part of this ministry. But we make you feel welcome. And I'm just the kind of pastor that really wants you to grow. I'm not going to minister to you uh, that it's okay to stay where you come in at. But I'm going to present it in such a way that you can relate to it and it will help you to really understand that Christ died so that you can be made free from whatever hangups, whatever vices, whatever hurts, whatever disappointments, and that our focus is Jesus. It's not the pastor, it's not the first lady, it's not the congregation, it's Jesus. We're always talking about Christ and his love for all people. If you wanted to learn more about New Life Church of Faith, uh, you can attend our Sunday services at 1419 Bowman Avenue in Danville, Illinois. We're located at the Heavenly Square Mall, and uh, that's the 11 o'clock a.m. service. Champaign-Urbana, you can uh, be a part of our 8 o'clock service, and we're located at the Hanford Hotel. That's 2408 Cunningham Avenue.